They don't care what you did. They don't care how long you've been doing it. And they don't care of whatever achievements you have done. They don't. They really, really don't. I had a great job, I had a great career, I had a great school, great place, I had a great team, I had a great bunch of people I was working with. I supported educators, administration, students. It was all good, it was all gravy. But I still felt stuck. I had two kids, married, still do. At that time, when my dad died, there was something in me that made me rethink things. Even though my career was taking off, made really good, decent money, and I was getting known around the country with the makerspace area, bringing coding to the schools. There was still something empty. I felt stuck. At that time, we were living in my my mom's house where I grew up. Since my dad died, I moved in with my family there, raising our two young children. But I couldn't do that anymore. I couldn't take it anymore. I wanted something better. I wanted something better for my wife, I wanted something better for my kids. So we decided to move. And after a lot of uh, a lot of research, a lot of visiting places and getting inspired by other places, we decided to move. We chose the Sacramento area, not too far from San Francisco where I grew up. So it was about an hour Hour and a, about an hour and a half, two hours drive. No traffic. It can take three hours. But that included stops for my young kids. So it's all good. It was close enough, but far enough from our fam- friends and family. But when we moved, there was a sense of adventure that we had. But like any adventure, there was some anxiety with that that I felt. We had a plan going in, but I was weary. I was on the lookout for anything that may derail us from that plan. The plan was to get my wife established because she's a public school teacher, but I'm not going to go too much detail on this episode because there was an episode years ago that we did where she faced a lot of challenges and she had to quit the beginning of the school year. It sucked. It really sucked. Because right there and then, even though I wasn't employed yet as a, in education, you know, I was subbing in. I was getting offers, actually, from other schools, but I turned them down. But I had to step up. Of course, right? I had to step up. But I went into these interviews at that time coming in pretty much bragging on who I was and what I've done what I've done in San Francisco I think they were impressed with what I did I've done but when it comes down to it they don't really care they just want someone there to do the job and not rock the boat what I realized every school just like any workplace, has their thing that they do. They have their ways of doing things. So the challenges were of these jobs that I turned down or I left. It's because one, they weren't paying me enough, right? And this comes to my head, <clears throat> my, my mindset is coming from the San Francisco Bay Area. And we know that San Francisco Bay Area is a very expensive place to live. That's one of the reasons why we moved here to the Sacramento area. Having said that, 
the places here weren't paying me. They weren't paying anyone San Francisco Bay Area salaries. So that took a hit. We had to adjust. We just moved into a brand new home, barely scraping by. We were doing it. We were sacrificing. We were doing the best we can. And then the pandemic hit, which saved a lot in in, in our commute time, commuting, uh, buying gas, going back and forth. I know a lot of people struggled and a lot of people faced a lot of heartaches during the pandemic. Luckily, from our family, we actually were able to hunker down and rebuild ourselves, at least financially also, and be able to thrive again. Especially when I got offered a new job at a different high school, which they were paying me at least another 50%. So it was very close to what I was earning in San Francisco Bay Area. So I accepted a job. I went in, believing, you know, from what I've gathered from the interviews that I was going to come in, help out as much as I can, share with them what I've learned over the years, basically show them how it's done. Naively, like I think, I thought that people wanted to know what I knew and we can follow it, we can do it. But I hit a lot of resistance. Like I said, I mentioned before, a lot of times, many times, people don't want to change. They want to do things their own way. They want to do things like they've done before. So even though there are people who do want to get bring change to a, an organization, you're going to run up into people who say otherwise. There were other challenges also. I think one of the biggest challenges where I failed is the lack of a team that I was part of. In San Francisco, I had a great team. The team was functioning really well. We were comrades. We had a camaraderie where, you know, we were bantering back and forth. And I worked with a lot of women in the education world. And that taught me how to work with a variety of people, not just men, not just the tech people, which are usually almost men, but also taught me how to banter in a way that's appropriate. But that's another story I'll get into later. But having a lack of or not having a team to help to join, I struggle with that. So I quit my job a year ago, more than a year ago. Even though money was really good, it wasn't worth it. I struggled in that. There are too many silos, too many things going on beyond my power, beyond my pay grade. So I had to reinvent myself the past year. But I kept on getting resistance. And that's a concept I'll talk about in a future episode. It can be external resistance, but a lot of it also, it's a mindset, internal resistance that's been created by me. But I had to reinvent myself because I couldn't be unemployed. Yes, I subbed in all over the place. Long-term subs, a former school I used to work with. I'm very grateful for the chance to go back. But there's another school that I applied to 
for a long term sub. I took that job, <clears throat> excuse me, even though it was for a one month position where I was covering someone for a month while they were um, away. So I took it at a different school, fairly large school, and I went in with the mindset of planting seeds, being open, being honest, where I was planting seeds that somehow, some way, they can recognize who I am and what I can bring to the table. Luckily, that paid off. That summer, they were looking for someone to take that job, the exact same job as the person who was away that I subbed for was leaving. So I went through the whole interview process. And yes, I showed off a bit of who I am, what I've learned, what I've done, but I've reframed it in a way that made well, let me. I reframed it in a way that I wasn't the hero. I wasn't the hero in this. I was just a coming in as a person who can help the school, that can help the kids, the students. So I reframed that my mindset that way. You know, I was spoiled. Back in San Francisco, you know, um, bringing that mindset to a different place. And without looking, without seeing that, it may not work, you know, confused me. But I was able to reframe that and change my mindset so that I can earn their trust, earn social capital, I had a lot of social capital, but here in the Sacramento area, I had none, I had a little bit, but in general, I had none, they don't care, they don't care what I've done, really, they don't care uh, my accomplishments, they just want to make sure that I can work with them, their team. Luckily, I think they trusted me because they hired me. And it's up to me now to not just teach the students, but also to build trust and be authentic and be useful for the faculty, the staff, and everyone in the school community. That help will help me build social capital. And I'm not going to go into it again. There's a different, another different episode on how to build trust, how to build social capital, political capital, as some people may call it. But maybe I just have to really just show them that I am honest and I am there to help. And I'm now part of a great team. I've been in this position for the past three months now, and I really, really, really like this team. It's very familiar to me from my old team in San Francisco, but it's up to me now to prove myself, being consistent, being reliable, being open, you know, ask questions. People love to answer questions. So I have to ask questions, even if it's a stupid question. There are no stupid questions. And to come in with empathy for others and try to understand their journey and not think that I'm the hero in this movie. So, this is one of the things I've 
been thinking about. I've been putting this episode out. I've well, been in the back burner for a long time now. It's hard. And I tried to write it out. I had ChatGPT to help me. I had Google Bar to help me. So I had all these AI LLMs to help me. And they, and of course, all those tools did help me. But what really is spurring me is the conversations I've been having with friends and family who really helped me. Last week, we had a party, our first party in our home with friends and family to celebrate our home housewarming party. We've been here six years, but we finally got to it. And the conversations I had with several of those people, dear people, is pushing me, is propelling me to share this story with you. So that's what I have for today on this episode. Please like it, please share it, and let me know what you think. I want to hear you and your struggle and when you try to look for another job and how you all had built trust again with a new group of people, a new job. Let me know. All right? Take care of yourself. Take care of your loved ones. And I'll see you soon. Peace.